St. Albans. Welcome to Northwest Access TV's presentation of Franklin County Varsity Boys Basketball. My name is Bryce Batchelder, joined by Landon Potvin, and tonight we are at BFA St. Albans as the Bob Whites host the visiting Colchester High School Lakers. Before we get to our starters for the evening, let's take a moment to thank our sponsors, Northwestern Orthopedics, Collins Pearly Sports and Fitness Center, Barrett Ford, JC Image, Corporate Outfitters, and Handy Toyota. If your business would like to be a sponsor for Northwest Access TV sports coverage this winter, please contact us at 802-782-8676. Now Landon, welcome. Who are our starters for this evening? Well, for the visiting Colchester Lakers, we got Zach Davis, Jackson Miller, the only senior, Ethan Gamelin, Holden Richard, and Owen Greener, as they are coached by Zach Davis. Good jumper by Miller. And for your home team, the Bob Whites, they got all starters out there. Thomas DeMar, Connor Leach, Charlie Yates, Justin Brown, and Dakota Rye. It is senior night this evening here at BFA. So it, as you said, Landon, an all-senior starting lineup for the Bob Whites. Uh, not able to get the three balls to fall quite yet as Colchester with an early two to nothing lead now has possession that's uh, Grenier did have the ball over to Richard. Yeah, this should be a good, very good game between the two teams as a three second call by Davis. These two teams were both in the Lake Division these past uh, 20 years or so. So they've been seeing each other at least twice a year. Whereas the other Metro teams, they haven't seen, you know, as much as they uh, normally. Solid defense from the Bob Whites on that last Colchester possession. Got a three second call on the Lakers and we saw the Bob Whites coming out some aggressive defense out on the perimeter. Hoping to match it with the offense. That three pointer is good for Connor Leach. Puts the Bob Whites on the board for the first time tonight. Now take a, a slim three to two lead with a minute and 15 gone in the game. He realized he had plenty of space, took a dribble and right in rhythm, banged it home. We've seen Connor Leach throw up some threes this year. Glad to see it start to fall early as uh, Leach gets the rebound, pushing it up. BFA likes to play at an up-tempo pace. Demar with a nice take, but met at the rim by Zach Davis. Yeah, the goal should be at least from coach's mark to coach's mark. You push the ball, make the defense have to get back. That puts Colchester up four to three. Two minutes gone in the opening quarter. Yates trying to call for the ball down on the post. Justin Brown was right behind him, had to clear out. Yates now stuck. Colchester asking for a travel. I think I agree with them on that one, but Leach puts up another three. That's off, but Justin Brown well, that rebound's not going to count. The ball touched the, the uh, support above the rim, and that is out of play. So it will be Colchester ball. Got a quick sub already there. But uh, props to Colchester defense on that one. Yates it, it got the ball down on the, the uh, right yeah. post, and it looked like he would have just kind of a, an easy turn, but Colchester... Their defense just collapsed in the key and didn't give Yates that open look he thought he'd have. Wow. There is definitely a different energy out there between Jeff Davis and the old coach. Uh, Miller, nice post take, but it's a different vibe with the uh, former MMU coach, Jeff Davis, for sure. Jackson Miller now with four early points. And Gamlin gets the block between Gamlin and Davis. I think BFA might have trouble down low. Well, it looks like they're playing a little bit of a zone in between Jackson Miller, Gamelin, and Davis. Those are three guys over six foot two, pretty lengthy as well. So causing havoc down low is going to be for sure all night. You can tell they're just sort of waiting to uh, try to disrupt a shot down low as that three pointer is off from Davis. But Colchester keeps the ball. We know. Last Saturday when the Bob Whites played Essex, they were killed by offensive rebounds that Essex kept getting. For reasons like that, that Essex kept getting more opportunities and would take advantage of them as Zach Davis gets the three-pointer because Colchester got an offensive rebound. So hopefully that's something that BFA uh, adjusted this week in practice and will put a little more focus on boxing out and preventing those offensive rebounds. 
It looks like they actually switched to a 3-2 uh, zone, keeping the lengthy game line on top. DeMar with the ball. Leach now up top. Colchester not giving the Bob Whites uh, many opportunities even to sort of get something going, let alone a, a, a clean look. But there is a look from DeMar. He takes advantage. And that gives DeMar three points. The best thing you can do is see the ball go into the basket early, especially having a big crowd like tonight. Hitting those shots, getting them into the game early is very important. Absolutely. The FA cuts into the Colchester lead now down six to nine with 320 to go in the first quarter. Leach pushing the ball up for the Bob Whites. Finds Rye in the corner. Goes cross court to DeMar. Gonna get a screen set by Smith. Smith saves the ball from going out of bounds. Colchester coach thought that he had stepped out. DeMar misses. And so Colchester now going the other way. DeMar already taken five shots. Made one, the deep three. Coach Davis calling a play now for the Lakers. Looks like somebody puked. I think it was. Might have just stepped in it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't think I've seen this before. I, I have. I have, for <laughs> sure. Um, Please, Landon, go into detail. Do you want me to? <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. I just. I know a few of the players on the Bob Whites have done this before. <laughs> uh, a couple of players have done it in an AAU tournament, summer league. So this is. Uh, all. Uh, all I will say is that when either of my two young sons vomit, uh, I need to have my wife clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, some, one of the players before actually right in the mask. Right in the mask. All right. <laughs> Hopefully you can... Uh, that's the, well, uh, that's the hard-hitting analysis. We're, uh, I think this is uh, a good time. I got a couple of seniors here. There's eight absolutely. seniors for the Bob Whites. Uh, Connor Leach, his plan after college or high school, he wants to go into criminal justice. Uh, he plans to attend either UVM or St. Mike's. I think he's been accepted to both. Just deciding on where he wants to go. Nice. So we're gonna stay local, and that's great. As Miller gets another one, that's six points now for him. Six of Colchester's 11 points puts the Lakers up 11 to six with 2.15 left in the first quarter. Leach gets it down to DeMar. DeMar looking around. Noah Earl into the game now for the Bob Whites, uh, along with Tipton. Yates stuck down there. He's surrounded by three Colchester players. Earl short on the three, but Yates in perfect position for the offensive rebound and the putback to give him his first two points of the night. And Bob Whites chip into the Colchester lead, now trailing 8 to 11, 145 left in the first quarter. Well, it, it was the offense that set up that offensive rebound, right? You get in the screens, and then you're in position on the right side of Davis, and he got the offensive rebound put back. That's good defensive possession there. Great defensive possession for Noah Earl. Yeah, uh, part of that, Landon, I think we saw when Yates got the ball down low, had three, three Colchester defenders around him, uh, and then two of them just sort of left. <laughs> And so he was able to kick it out to Earl for a clean look and then get perfect position for that offensive rebound. I think uh, Zach Davis was complaining that uh, the floor was a little bit slippery down there, that, that one spot. So they're uh, getting traction with the mm. shoes. Might see a little chunk down there. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> <laughs> Leach with the ball, it's uh, Noah Earl on the opposite side, finds DeMar cutting baseline. 
Mars can try to take it himself. A nice turn. Oh, great pivot. Unlucky bounce around the rim. But a really good luck because of his footwork down there. Coach Davis, very animated on the sideline. He, he's always been like that. I got the chance to play against him in uh, my, my senior and junior year, and he's always animated. You know, you see him clapping his hands right now. He's a very, very good coach. A drive by Richard, kicks that out to Gamlin. Finds Grenier. Grenier looking around, just under a minute left in the opening quarter. Davis with the ball, and an open look for Grenier, and he's gonna make it. Grenier's first basket of the night, and puts Colchester up by six, 14 to eight, with 37 seconds left in the first quarter. Leach finding Hughes down to Yates. Yates trying to work against Gamlin, gets it to go. That was a great take. He was patient enough, got Gamlin in there, and was able to finish. So BFA now trails 10 to 14 with 15 seconds left in the first quarter. Colchester, I think, going to try to hold it for the last shot. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Noah Earl going to have to put it up. Not aware of the clock, but a good defensive play by Noah Earl to get the steal so that Colchester couldn't get a last shot off. And we will end the first quarter with Colchester leading 14 to 10. Landon, what are some of the things that you saw in that first quarter? Well, it's uncharacteristic of the Bob Whites taking this many threes in the first quarter, but it's definitely better to get them up you know, get a feel of the rhythm, see what kind of strength you need to get the shots up from deep. So just seeing the shots, and, the, and they've hit a couple, right? Leach had that nice open one dribble shot. Damar hit one again to uh, cut the lead to two. So it's it's the patience that they have to start continuing to do, right? At the end of the quarter, it was Yates in the post being patient. Uh, they are patient on uh, swinging the ball, right, working the zone. So if they can continue to be patient, work the post, get it out, they get some in outlooks. They'll be okay. Damar has three points on six attempts. Leach has three. Yates has two points on two attempts and two offensive rebounds. So it's uh, the score is not where you want it to be, but it's definitely a good start offensively for sure. But they're, I mean, they're only down by four. It's still, you know, essentially anybody's game. So uh, they're certainly not in a bad spot going into the second quarter. Uh, Lakers scoring leader is Jackson Miller with six points on four attempts, might I add. Bob White's starting the second quarter with possession. Seth Richards now in the game. As Leach puts up a three, that bounces off, and Davis gets the rebound for Colchester. Nibue in the game now for the Lakers. Gets the ball up top over to Davis. Davis looking around. Down low to Miller. Miller misses, gets his own rebound, though. Yates steals that rebound away. Yates pushes it, finds Richards, cutting. Richards almost knocked it. But a great find from Charlie Yates to Seth Richards running that fast break to perfection. Well, I guess near perfection. Would have been perfect with the dunk. That's Richards' first points of the game. And now BFA only down by two by a score of 12 to 14. A minute gone by in the second quarter. Yeah, one of my keys to the game for the Bob Whites was don't lose the energy from this night, right? It's senior night, big crowd. You know, don't come out of the first quarter playing. Take the energy from the first quarter, bring it into the second, and especially don't do it after halftime. Because in that game against Essex, they were up 15 to two after the first, 27 to 15 after two, and then they let the Essex Hornets come right back into it. So hopefully the energy continues with throughout. Yeah, it is a skill to be able to play with energy and then another skill to be able to harness that energy to kind of use it when you need it. Three-pointer is long, and that will be off Colchester, off of Ethan Gamlin. 
So I think that's one of those long offensive, almost offensive rebounds that I was talking about earlier uh, with the game against Essex last Saturday. Uh, Gamlin just kind of snuck up because of a lack of urgency from the Bob Whites to corral that long rebound. See if they got a little lucky that Gamlin knocked it out. Yeah, extra possessions is a serious thing and a serious problem for the Bob Whites, so they, they really need to fix that. Kamara going to pull up a mid-range jumper, just rolls out. Yates and Rich Richards fighting for the rebound. Yates gets it. Richards now with the offensive rebound, kicks it out to Noah Earl for three. Short, DeMar is there. Thomas DeMar somehow sneaking between that whole group of Bob Whites and Lakers to get the offensive board and the putback. He has five points and ties the game at 14. Just under six minutes left in the first half. And that, that's one of the Bob Whites uh, specialties, right? Those second chance points. They have 10. They're averaging 43 points on the year, or 45, excuse me, and 10 of them are on second chance points. Yeah, Bue with his first points of the game, a nice little floater. Puts Lakers back on top, 16-14, with five and a half left in the second. He's going to drive in and will be fouled. I think it was a great take, very strong take. He's very good at contorting his body to get the exact shot he wants. But he has to be very careful when he goes up with his left hand, right? He likes, likes to give it out a little bit. That Laker foul on number 23, Holden Richard, his first, team's first. Yates at the line to shoot two. Hits number one. I'll tell you, this game has uh, been one with just really fun pace. Yes. And part of it is there have only been two fouls called this entire game. We're, uh, we are two and a half minutes into the second quarter and two fouls called. Make that three. As I say that, the announcer chinks. For the refs, huh? Well, it, it's, it starts with the energy, right, and the great hustle from Richards. It's an offensive rebound on a free throw. You don't see that very much, and it's not lack of effort from the Lakers. It's more Richards' six foot seven height yes. demanding the ball. That's helpful. Uh, that Colchester foul on number 15, Jackson Miller, his first, team second. Richard in the corner. Jamar. To Richard, back to DeMar, a nice two-man game, and DeMar hits it from the free throw line. That's his spot. DeMar leading the Bob Whites with seven points and puts them up by one. I think their first lead since three to two in the first quarter. They're getting caught on that a lot, the back door. Oh, that cut. back door. They got lucky that time. Richard. The basket gets fouled. He will try to earn the three-point play. The coach is going to have to be very careful tonight. He, like he's mentioned, very animated. We've got our great cameraman Mason Master getting on that. It's almost after every basket. <laughs> he's uh, he's doing something. Yeah, Coach Davis arguing that should have been an offensive foul. I uh, thought that. Zach Davis was in position, but the referees did not agree, and that's Zach Davis's first personal foul. Team's third as Richard makes the three-point play. He now has five points and extends the Bob White's lead to four. They now lead 20 to 16, a little under five minutes left in the second quarter. Davis guarded by Brown. Three-pointer is up and short for Miller. Hallrigan gets the rebound for Bob Whites. He finds DeMar down to Richard. Ball knocked away, recovered by Colchester. The Bob Whites are very comfortable with letting the Lakers shoot, shoot the threes. Somehow, Colchester keeps that possession. But Hallrigan, with some fantastic anticipation, takes it himself, lays it in. For his first point, Bob White's up 22 to 16, and listen to the crowd. That all started with the help defense, right? You gotta help the helper. Demar was on the floor. The next person slid over. Brown got out, De and Horgan read it perfectly, right? He anticipated, had the fast break layup, six-point lead. Wonderful. And then it's not just uh, uh, about getting the lead and building the lead. It's also about how you do it. And plays like that get the crowd 
into it and can help drive you uh, to keep building that lead. And, and you look at the, the, the far side of the court with the student sections, it's all green and gold, right? The atmosphere here is, is great. Looks like they're gonna try to <laughs> double, triple check that uh, wet spot over there. Uh, give another senior shout out, Thomas DeMar, uh, number 34. He's going into the workforce. He uh, wants to do the plumbing, right? He works at Manly Plumbing and Heating, and his plan is, they, they say they're gonna give him the keys in a couple of years. Oh, that's so great. his plan is to continue to work there. He works there right now during school hours, right? He's got all his credits, so he's able to mm -hmm. get out of school early and uh, go work for there. Uh, the next one, we'll do Charlie Yates here. He wants to go into construction management. Um, his dad is up there with the Harrison Concrete. He wants to, he's going to Wentworth in Boston to mm. uh, carry over the construction management business with his father. I know Wentworth. Do ya? They, uh, yep, my alma mater played them basketball. I uh, spent four years cheering against them when they, nice. when they played for in college, but uh, good for Charlie Yates. And uh, Boston's a great city. For sure. Yes. And Thomas DeMar, that's great. Business prospects already. Four minutes left in the second quarter. Yabue showing some nice handles. Davis and Yabue passing it back and forth. Colchester getting plenty of movement on this one, but it really is just Davis and Yabue who touched the ball so far, this possession for them. Well, on the film, it's, it's Colchester has no perimeter attack, right? It's just, it, like we just saw, they just played back and forth at the top of the key, so they need to get into the lane and start attacking. You can tell they're sort of going back and forth, trying to shift BFA's defense enough to get a look down low, but it, BFA's defense held and it didn't happen. Yabue puts up a crazy layup and that swirls in. For, uh, that gives him four points on the night. Now BFA leads 22-18 with 3-10 left in the second quarter. Yeah. No yeah. Earl working down low. And we'll get another foul called. Coach Davis asking the referee for a three-second call. It must have been with the body because that looked pretty clean from here. Foul on number 23, Holden Richard, his second, team's fourth. But man, that was a really impressive find by Richards to set that up. I mean, I, I really thought he was gonna go up with it and found Earl. BFA is perfect from the line so far tonight. I think Yates missed one. This one, okay. So near perfect yes. from the line. Yes. Now up 24-18, and those were Noah Earl's first points of the night. And they shoot okay on the year. <laughs> their, their standards are way higher than what they are. They're shooting 53%. Davis with the corner three, that bounces off. Noah Earl gets it. Going to push all the way up for Justin Brown, passing into triple coverage. Here the turnovers. And that'll be a travel call. Honestly, surprised that wasn't a foul. But the Bob Whites will take it. Yeah, I mean, he ran right into two people. It's hard to run into two people and expect a foul call, especially because he did go straight up with it. Leach gets it into Richard. DeMar going baseline. Gets under the hoop, passes it back out to Leach in the opposite quarter. Leach gonna dribble it up top. Richard gonna pull up from the free throw line. Rattles off. If he can add that to his arsenal, he'd be very dangerous. Yeah. Still learning and developing in the post. If he can master that first and then that jump shot. Well, and, and you know, we were talking before the game, if, uh, if Noah Earl and Seth Richard could develop an, uh, a 
a pick and roll from up top, it would be absolutely devastating as Jackson Miller hits that one from the block. He has eight points. Colchester trailing 24 to 20, a minute and a half left in the first half. And I'm, I'm very surprised Coach Menard has not had his guys adjust yet on that backdoor screen. Thomas Lamar still leading the Bob White scoring effort. He has nine points. Minute 15 left. And, and he has not missed here in the second quarter. He's three for three. You love to see it. BFA up 26 to 20. Davis gonna pull up from three. Seth Richards with the rebound. Hands over to Neural, up to Yates. And definitely not continue to leave Davis open. And Leach is three, just a little bit strong, Niabue. Gets the rebound. Davis looking around. You're right, Landon, uh, BFA content to let the Lakers kind of hold the ball and shoot it from outside. We've seen against some other teams who are good shooters that BFA will sort of try to extend that perimeter defense a little bit more, and, and they're being a little, little more conservative outside to try to plug the middle. Davis will be fouled on that shot attempt. Strong take, man. Zach Davis is a guard in a center's body for sure. He's able to shoot. He's lit up Rice. He's lit up uh, MMU and other top teams in the com or in the Metro Division with uh, 10 plus points. I mean, he's very impressive, especially for a sophomore. Davis misses the first. That BFA foul was on number 34, Thomas Demar. His first, team second. 15.8 seconds left in the half. So uh, whoever gets, if Davis misses, whoever gets the rebound will have an opportunity here, but that is null and void as uh, BFA will try to hold it for the last shot. Leach turns it over. Good anticipation from Grenier. Three, two, one. Oh, close from Jackson Miller throwing that one up, but that'll be the end of the first half. BFA leading Colchester 26 21 before we send you to halftime. Let's take a moment to thank our sponsors, Northwestern Orthopedics, Collins Pearly Sports and Fitness Center, Barrett Ford, JC Image, Corporate Outfitters, and Handy Toyota. If your business would like to be a sponsor for Northwest Access TV sports coverage this winter, please contact us at 802-782-8676. I'm Bryce Batchelder along with Landon Potvin. We're going to take a little break for halftime, and we will be back here at BFA St. Albans for senior night and the second half. Welcome back to Northwest Access TV's coverage of Franklin County Varsity Boys Basketball. We're at BFA as the Bob Whites on senior night are hosting the Colchester Lakers. The Bob Whites are leading 26-21. I'm Bryce Batchelder with Landon Ponson. Uh, before we jump into things, let's take a moment to thank our sponsors, Northwestern Orthopedics, Collins Pearly Sports and Fitness Center, Barrett Ford, JC Image, Corporate Outfitters, and Handy Toyota. Uh, Landon. Uh, what what uh, have you seen so far in this first half of this game, and, and what are some adjustments that you think both teams should make? Well, I think the Ball Boys have a great facilitator in Thomas DeMar, and in fact, he is the showtime player of the game so far. Um, he's rocking, what, eight points, he has a rebound and assist, no turnovers, which is what they need, right, to limit those turnovers. My goal was for the team to be under 10 turnovers. For the Ball Boys, they have to be careful with that back door. Right, and be careful with letting them continue to shoot wide open threes. Right, Eventually those are gonna fall. But be patient on offense and continue to work the zone. And for the visiting Lakers, they need to attack from the perimeter better, right? They're getting the shots in the post, but they need to be able to drive, kick out, and they need to draw fouls. I think they only drew what? One foul, two, uh, two fouls? Two fouls. I mean, that can't happen, right? If they're gonna win, they're gonna be getting to the line, getting players in foul trouble. And BFA will adjust. They're going to adjust on the backdoor cut. So what's plan B going to be? And I know Jeff Davis is a good coach. He's gonna, he has these guys prepared. So it, it's what's, what's next after the backdoor cut. Some scoring leaders for the first half. 
As Landon mentioned, Thomas DeMar leading all scores with nine points. And then Charlie Yates and Seth Richards each with five. And for Colchester, Jackson Miller leads his team with eight. And Niabue and Davis each with four. So we are starting the third quarter here. Colchester with the ball, but the Bob Whites with the lead of 26-21. Grenier dribbling the ball up for the Lakers. Guarded by Thomas DeMar. DeMar getting his hands in there, not making it easy on Grenier. He'll be called for an over and back. And right off, Coach Davis on the ref for that call, saying that it was tipped backcourt. Very well could have been, but refs did not see it that way. It's not our decision. DeMar with the ball for the Bob Whites. Richards posting down low. He's gonna turn to his right, loses the ball. Grenier picks it up. He's gonna push it the other way. Up to Davis, Davis with the three pointer. It's good. So Davis now with seven points. Oh, they called that a long three, excuse me, or a long two, excuse me. Uh, the double, excuse me on that. Impressive. So he has six points. Colchester now trailing 23-26. Another turnover for the Bob Whites. Getting out of rhythm, right? It's that energy, right. the patience on offense. That's always, it. that's always the tough thing when you have a 10-minute break at halftime to keep that energy going. Just a little bit longer. I won't say it. A good take, strong take by Jackson Miller. He's the first player in the game in double digits with 10 points. Colchester now only down by one, 26-25, 6.40 left in the third quarter. Defensively, you cannot continue to take those risks, right? Eventually, it's going to hurt you like it did there. Earl misses the three. Yates gets an offensive rebound and loses it out of bounds. It will be Colchester ball. Yates now four rebounds, four offensive rebounds. Lakers in there on that 4-0 run to start the second quarter. Yeah, I'm not figuring out what. Uh, they, they started hot in the first half, in that first quarter, and then eventually BFA was able to catch up and take a lead. A nice find. Noah Earl reaches his hand in there, tips the ball. DeMar driving underneath the hoop. Doesn't get a clean look because of Holden Richard. I think, I think Richard might have gotten him in the eye. Makeup call, possibly. <laughs> but it was, it was that Miller had a great look in that last position off the, the, the screen up top. And Miller passes that to Zach Davis. Zach Davis hits the basket, uh, the bat, the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't decide whether to say bucket or basket. Uh, he gets fouled. He'll go to the line to shoot one. More importantly, that gives Colchester a one-point lead. Yeah, I thought you were going somewhere with, like, brisket or something. But I could go for brisket right now, not going to lie. That BFA foul on number 12, Connor Leach, his first team's first of the second half. Davis completes the three-point play. He has nine points. Colchester now up 28-26. 5.40 left in the third quarter. Earl takes the three, takes it instead. Reverse layup. That's a pretty one. He gets fouled. And he will try to complete the three-point play and ties the game at 28. The kids are now saying that is that is sauce, right? That is some filet. <laughs> and he was able to go up, under, get the roll. Now he's at the line. Would you say it's some brisket? <laughs> That's yours. <laughs> Earl completes the three-point play. He has five points. That Colchester foul on number 15, Jackson Miller, his second, team's first of the second half. Five and a half to go. BFA reclaims the lead up 29-28. Back door, Davis. Davis. Tell you, Zach Davis taking over this game. Poor Colchester has 11 points now. Colchester back on top by one, 30 to 29, five minutes left in the third quarter. 
three-pointer is up and just short for Hughes. Grenier over to Davis. And one over to Davis again. I think we're going to keep hearing Davis' name on all these possessions. Gamlin looking around, Justin Brown guarding him. Quick sub. Three-pointer is good for Jackson Miller. It's, it's in rhythm, right? The open threes, I mentioned it, they're going to fall. Col Colchester is way better than what their record is. Colchester now up 33-29. Yates trying to find any kind of angle. Eventually draws the foul. And all the points since halftime by the Lakers has been Davis and Miller. Yep. Davis with seven, Miller with five. So, I mean, you just, my player of the game to watch was Jackson Miller, and he's been lighting it up. But big development as Yates hits the first. Jackson Miller, that was his third personal foul. In a game, in game with low fouling, they all go to yep. Miller. Yeah, that's right. So Miller is going to take a seat. So gives the Bob Whites a little opportunity here. And, and, and props to him because he this is his first time coming out of the game. Yates with good effort trying to save the ball, unsuccessful. He goes one for two from the line, so BFA trailing 30 to 33. 417 left in the third quarter. Grenier running the point for Colchester. Down to Richard. Richard, a little lefty hook shot over Earl. That's his first bus, uh, bath basket, there I go again, of the game. He has two points. Colchester now up 35-30. Justin Brown and trying to use his strength to muscle Gamlin down low. Kicks it out to Yates. Yates with a nice pump fake. Going to pull up from the elbow. That one misses, but Justin Brown there for the offensive rebound. Earl trying to thread the needle down to Yates. Yates somehow keeps it in bounds, but surrounded by two Lakers players, and he steps out of bounds. That was a crazy possession. Two offensive rebounds, both by Justin Brown. Wild pass right over the middle of the paint. Somehow managed to keep it alive, but then eventually it did end up going out of bounds. And we will get our first timeout of the game. No, not oh. first, second. First BFA timeout. Yes. First BFA timeout of the game. 3.33 left in the third quarter. All those threes now. Uh, Colchester leading 35 to 30. <laughs> Just a reminder, Northwest Access TV is a nonprofit organization. If you're enjoying the sports coverage throughout the year, please consider making a donation. Just visit northwestaccess.tv slash donation. So, Landon, we've talked about those two guys for Colchester taking over this game, Jackson Miller and Zach Davis. Now, it looks like Miller uh, might be on the bench for a little bit longer, but Davis is still out there. What adjustments does BFA need to make? The defense, BFA is normally a defensive first team. It's more of, can they execute the offense, right? Obviously, they're going to adjust. How they're going to adjust, limit the threes. I, I'm very surprised the players have not realized that the backdoor cuts are, are, is the main, the go-to play for this Lakers team. And they're still getting burnt on it. So that's, that's where they have to adjust first, realizing the backdoor cuts. Absolutely. Davis with the ball. Yates knocked it away. Davis finding that backdoor cut, like you said. Gamlin with an offensive rebound. He has four points. Lakers now up 37 to 30. This game's starting to get a little out of hand here for BFA. Only seven points. They're certainly still in it, but they can't afford to let this lead keep growing. That was great recovery by Green here. Brown's gonna go to the line, but what a setup by Earl, right? We all oh, thought yeah. he was gonna go shoot that jumper, but he found Brown cutting. That foul on number 14, Owen Grenier. That's his first, team's third. Justin Brown at the line to shoot two. Give another shout out to the BFA seniors. Dakota's plan is to go to college. Not sure where yet. Doesn't have many colleges in mind, but he definitely plans to go for financing. And Justin, the gentleman shooting, he 
accepted a scholarship offer at uh, Sony Brogport for football, and he plans oh, to do exercise awesome. science. Brown goes 0 for 2 from the line. Davis with the missed pass. Harrigan is fouled. He'll go to the line to shoot two. And that Colchester foul on number 33, Zach Davis. His second, team's fourth of the second half. 2.46 remaining. Morgan hits the first. I do think Brown hit one of those free throws. Don't mean to throw you under the bus. You said he went 0 for 2. He did. The numbers match. That's it. Yeah, my fault. Not to throw you under the bus, Landon. <laughs> Colchester, passing ball around. Davis for an open three. Misses, Richard gets the long rebound. Pushes it up to Brown. Brown, yep, lowers his shoulder. And Brown will be called for the offensive foul. That is his second foul. Team's fourth. So Colchester still with a five point lead here. 2.15 left in the third quarter. Good recovery by Richard to step in, stop that baseline drive. But Davis for three. So he has 14 points, puts Colchester back up by eight. Richard fighting for that offensive rebound. Gamlin comes up with it. So I think if high school had a replay review, I actually think Davis's toe was on the line. And it should have been a long two, but either way, it's counted as a three. And it, and it could have been a foul as well, so. So moot point. And say if, uh... Yep, and called Justin Brown reaching in. That's gonna be number three on him. And BFA's third team foul, 126 remaining in the third quarter. Brown and Horgan gonna take a seat as Yates and Leach check back in for the Bob Whites. Watch three. Davis, he's gonna take it. Leach gets the rebound. Oh, awesome play. Richards with the slam. Missed it. Went from Earl to DeMar to Richard. To the rim. Offensive foul of hold on Colchester, a moving screen. trying to calm down Charlie Yates as Yates is talking to the official. Officials have been showing uh, uh, admirable patience tonight, I think, with coaches and players sort of uh, realizing the energy of the game and not wanting to step in and sort of control it and let the game kind of have its own pace. And you know, Coach Menard has been very impressed with Charlie Yates's maturity from junior to senior year, because normally that would escalate it. Right, that's going to the next level, but the kid, very impressive, proud of him, taking it and being mature, more mature. Yep, last year, Yates at times would get so frustrated, it would, it would really take his head out of yep. the game, but this year he's, he's been able to kind of channel it a little bit better. And he is such an important piece to this team. 
sometimes not scoring all that much, but still an energy and a defense. And the diving for the loose balls. Exactly. Like that. Exactly. I mean, four offensive rebounds here early or late. DeMar gets the first free throw. Goes one for two. So DeMar now in double digits. Ten points. DFA now trailing by five, 35-40. 52.9 seconds left in the third quarter. Jamar finds Richard. Closely guarded by two Colchester players. Doesn't matter. And that's what we want Richards to be, right? That Absolutely. dominant force in the post. Get down low. He has nine points. Yates with the steal. Called for the travel. I think the correct call. Talking to Coach Menard before the game. He just got his brand new suit tailored, nice maroon <laughs> suit, and now he, now he's jacketless. I told him I'd, I'd get that in there. It's, uh, and Damar, now he gets the steal, and he'll be pushed from behind by Owen Grenier. And that should be Grenier's second personal foul. And I believe that foul will put BFA into the bonus. And I'm not trying to diminish anybody here, but on the Lakers, it, it's Miller, Davis, and then dot, dot, dot. Right. The, the ball handling is Davis is going to check back in. Right. I mean, DeMar took advantage of it, right? Taking advantage of the, the, the junior getting a steal in the front court, right? Now he's at the line. misses, but Richard, oh, misses that, gets another offensive rebound, and will get a jump ball, but a good fight by Seth Richards down low. Hiding the stats by Falk, for sure. Two offensive rebounds. The possession will stay with the Bob Whites, 20.6 seconds left in the third quarter. No, Earl having trouble fighting through, and he'll get called for an offensive foul. He's good for uh, one or two of those types of offensive fouls a game. And that will be his first personal foul, team's fourth. And that's a credit to Colchester's defense. They flogged up that play. It didn't let BFA get through any of their screens cleanly. 15 seconds. We've seen Coach Davis call C almost every time, and it's a screen up top, and then a screen coming down for the guy to come across. Six, five, four, three, two. Ooh! Oh, I don't understand that at all. He was backing him down, and Yates fell. I don't understand how that's a, a block. He pulled the that's, chair out. It was a room. perfect no call. That's uh, one of those classic Chauncey Billups moves, pulling the chair out from under him. Unlucky with the foul call. It will be Charlie Yates' first personal, but Colchester does not score. And at the end of three, Colchester leading the Bob Whites 40 to 37. And after the hot start by the Lakers, the Bob Whites very fortunate to only be down three going into the final quarter. Absolutely. That third quarter could have gotten out of hand uh, for the Bob Whites, but good fight and good recovery uh, in the last uh, three minutes or so. I, I, I think those last three points by the Bob Whites is what home field advantage or home yep. court advantage definitely does for you. You know, home court advantage definitely gives you between three to five points a game, especially on senior day. Let's take a moment while we have a break to thank our sponsors, Northwestern Orthopedics, Collins Pearly Sports and Fitness Center, Barrett Ford, JC Image, Corporate Outfitters, and Handy Toyota. If your business would like to be a sponsor for Northwest Access TV sports coverage this winter, please contact us at 802-782-86. 7-6. Some scoring leaders for the game for the Bob Whites. Thomas DeMar leads his team with 10, Seth Richards with 9, and Charlie Yates with 6. 
for Colchester. Zach Davis leads all scorers in the game with 14. Jackson Miller has 13. So 27 of their 37 points accounted for by those two players. And you know, honestly, that's all right because getting you know three points here, two points there, three points there, it's. Ethan Gamlin, he now has six points. Colchester up 42-37. Good find from DeMar to Richards. Richards just muscles that one up. And he now has 11 points on the night. Brings the Boys back within three. Down 39-52, 30 seconds gone in the fourth quarter. We've got a good one. Davis up against Noah Earl. Noah Earl with fantastic defense, just arms straight up. Uh, we were talking the last few minutes, uh, last four minutes or so, where BFA made their move in the third quarter. It's worth noting, that's when Jackson Miller went to the bench. Mm -hmm. And Davis was on the bench for a minute as well. Yep. Noah Earl with the steal. Misses the layup, but on. The rebound attempt will get an over the back call. That foul on number 33, Zach Davis, his third. Team's eighth. Charlie Yates at the line for a one and one. Bob Whites are known for the pressure on the hedge. It was a screen. Noah anticipated it, got the steal, and it's leading. And, and, and Yates, once again, the hustle plays. Not very often do you see a breakaway player, you know, probably had a wide open layup, have somebody trailing him for the offensive rebound. Yates goes one for two. He has seven points. Bob Whites trailing by two, 40 to 42. Davis with the ball, up to Miller. The Coburn. Ball eventually gets to Richard. Closely guarded by DeMar, uses the screen from Gamlin. Gamlin with the ball now. Noah Earl. Now Leach up on Coburn. And William will have a timeout called by Coach Davis. And, and I think Coach Davis realized Coburn, number 13, he's a freshman out there. And you could tell the eye test, he, he, he's scrambling. He doesn't know where, where to go. So getting that sub in, calm everybody down, you know, up two against the good St. Albans team. Well, it's, uh, I think it's as good a time as any to plug some of our coverage coming up tomorrow here on Northwest Access TV. Tomorrow at 7 o'clock, we have boys hockey live from Collins Pearly. Colchester at BFA. Same schools as tonight, just a different sport. And also tomorrow night at 7.15, live from the Highgate Arena, we have Hartford coming up to play the Thunderbirds in boys hockey. Got three seniors left to shout out. Brennan Baker, the manager, he's going into finance and going into some pre prestigious schools. He wants to go to either South Carolina or Texas A&M. Has not heard back from them. Damon Tipton, he's originally from Louisiana, transferred up here last year. He would like to go into engineering. Not sure if he's going to be staying in Vermont or if he's going to be going back to his hometown. Colchester with the ball out of the timeout. They're leading 42 to 40, six and a half left in the game. A good senior night game on our hands. Davis trying to look around, finds Miller for three. Rattles out, but Gamlin with the offensive rebound. Kicks that out for three. That one is too strong. Battle for the rebound. Leach somehow ends up with it. Richard over to Yates. Yates loses it. I don't think Yates was expecting that pass. And Davis will be called for the offensive foul. And that is huge. That is his fourth personal. Connor Leach making the play on defense. Knew exactly where to be and was sent. And 
It's also going to be Zach Davis's fifth foul, according to the scoreboard. Oh, so Zach Davis got teed up. And that technicals count as personal fouls. That's his fifth personal. I will say, Coach Davis, he's been animated all game. He's getting a little out of control in this fourth quarter. I, I saw him during one of the free throws talking to uh, uh, Mr. Barlow, complaining about one of the referees. Never the greatest look if you're a coach doing that during a game. And on that technical, he looked this direction and saying, you know, that's, that's not not it. But Lamar misses the free throw. And against Essex last night, there was two technicals at the end, very end of the game. And they went two for six in the final 20 seconds. So Demar goes one for two. He has 11 points. BFA trailing by one, 41-42. With the ball, 6.04 left. No, Earl with a long three, just rattles out Richards. Richards with the follow. Richards with 13 points gives the Bob Whites a one point lead of 43 42. 5 40 remaining. And that's all heart. You know, that's courage, fighting for the offensive rebound and putting it back up. The goal to win. Coach Davis right now is on the court. Coach Hester Ball. BFA crowd very into it now. I mean, they have been all game, but especially now. that The technical that was called on Colchester has really invigorated them. And Davis gets teed up. To be honest, it's about time. The refs gave him, I mean, one of the longest leashes I've ever seen a coach get in a high school game. Very big and crucial. I mean, the players, I mean, their heads are down. You know, they're out of this game now. They're out of this game with back-to-back right. -back technicals. That's just totally, you know, and it's not the player's fault. I mean, the coach took them out of this game. No, Earl hits the first. Now I realize that my coaching experience is mainly coaching my son's uh, uh, team of four and five year olds on Saturday mornings. Uh, but one of the things I've always held to, just in terms of coaching philosophy, is that the team is going to take their cues from the coach. So in the end of the game, if the coach is panicking, the team is going to panic. It's one of the reasons that I loved Brad Stevens as a Celtics coach. Down the stretch, he held his composure and he didn't panic. And as a player, you take on the characteristic of your coach at times. So if you have a coach who's able to hold their composure at the end of the game, your team is going to hold their composure. Well said. And I'll get off my coaching soapbox <laughs> now and go back to calling this game on local access television. Let's, uh, let's give Tanner Smith, his, the, the final senior for the Ball Boys, his shout out. He plans to attend North Carolina or Stonehill. He's still waiting to hear back from Stonehill or both schools. And he would love to go into either business management, sports management. So it's, uh, Tanner Smith's a very smart kid, great guy. So he's going to do well for sure. Five twenty-six left in this close senior night game. BFA up 44-42. The game that has gone back and forth. Colchester has led by as much as eight. BFA has led by as much as five, I believe. Yates down low. And he will be fouled. And, you know, like you were saying, what the coach does, the players emulate. And that, it's starting to follow. It's, Right, and we don't want to get on the players. They are no, no. amateur high schooler players, right? But the players do take the cue from their coach. Yates hits his first. He has eight points.
Gates Let's goes one for two. I think Gates has gone one for two in all of his free throw trips tonight. <laughs> Yambue with the uh, ball, gonna thought about baseline, pulled it out. Well, he's finally getting some minutes here because not only do they need his ball handling, but he's been out most of this game because of a hmm. wrist injury. Loose ball gathered by Gamlin. Miller gonna pull up from a corner three. That one misses. Richards gathers it, hands it over to Earl. Earl loses it. Able to gather. Definitely needed a look at the post there. Look at the big mismatch. Called. I think the foul is called on Seth Richards. Yeah, you could see his arms were all over. Let's, uh, Let's talk about the officiating discrepancy between big men and, and the small guys. I mean, that one, legitimate foul, but it is, you know, bigger guy yeah. on that mismatch down low trying to, to, to seal off a smaller it, guard. Usually when you right? try to seal somebody off, you use your elbow. It's always going to look worse than it actually is, when it, but, I mean, you know, that one, a, leg, a legitimate foul. Uh, it's our pitch. Menard tell his bench, you know, let's let's get keep this energy up because there's still plenty of ball game left. There's a whole lot. This is anybody's game right now. BFA up three. Nyabue out to Miller. Miller finds Grenier. Grenier a fadeaway. Tough shot. Offensive rebound though. And. We'll get a jump ball. That was a quick jump ball call. Good job, Coach Mike Swim. BFA's possession of 45-42, 3.50 left in the game. DeMar drives to his left. Oh, a big swap by Miller. Another loose ball. Plenty of blocks going out tonight by the Lakers. And now the game is getting a little chippy here. A little out of hand. So possession should go to Colchester. Passing the ball around the outside is Richard. Hunts Gamlin. Miller trying to find some space. Gamlin gonna drive through, misses the layup. Colchester fans asking where the foul was. He definitely. Gates slips, loses the ball. He was definitely smothered down here. And PFA foul. On number 34, Thomas DeMar. That's his second. Team seven. So Colchester now in the bonus. Gamlin at the line for a one and one. Player of the game is back. We have the shirt we'll give to a, a player of the game, but we'd also love to see in the comments section who you think the player of the game should be. Ethan Gamlin goes two for two from the line. He has eight points. How many uh, viewers we got on this stream? Because I expect at least. We got 107 right now. 106 just dropped. 50 votes. So uh, I have to say,
say, we talked about him in the first half. Not the leading scorer right now, but has had his hand in so many plays. Uh, Thomas DeMar, right, whether it's scoring or, or getting some key passes and assists, uh, as well as playing stellar defense. Uh, right. it, it's not all about the points. Exactly. You mentioned DeMar doing everything, but Yates has also been doing Absolutely. everything. Richard, I mean, this, this game has, is, is full of great athletic players that have done everything for their team. Richards is putting in a, a near double-double, and we, we've seen him continue to pound the glass, put up shots underneath. I mean, that, that's tough. That, that takes Absolutely. your energy out of you. It, it's it's uh, it's a bruising down there. And same thing with Yates. Yates is very physical, so, you know, you're taking hard screens from Yates and Richards, and that's just knocking you down. So uh, we got Damar, Richards, and Yates up for... Up for uh, Showtime right now. So let us know in the comments between Yates, Damar, and Richards who you think should be our Showtime player of the game. And, you know, we don't want to give it to the Lakers, but if they come out, I mean, it's, it's Davis we and have, Miller. We have given it to the visiting team before. And if they win this game, it, it's going to be on the back of Jackson Miller for sure. As he is, he's fronting Richards at this point. Yeah. Well, with with Davis out of the game, it's all on Miller for Colchester. Yates down low, gonna turn to his right, just sealed off the Mbue. That's, that's a mismatch down there. Okay. We we're just talking about how physical Yates is, and Yates now in double digits with 10 points. BFA has a 47-44 lead, two and a half left. Huge block by Richards. Wow. It looked like Richard had a clear path on the baseline to a layup, but Richards, <laughs> with the recovery, help side defense, knocks that one away. Earl is fouled, he'll shoot two. And you know, it's really funny that at the beginning of this game, me and you were speaking about the expectations of Richards and what he's been so far this year. And man, he, he's starting to pick it up. I mean, props to him. And big, this is big block. This is the time of the season that BFA needs him to to pick it up. And because you know Richards isn't there, that's two points. 47-46, and we're seeing JVB head coach Cody Bushway and assistant coach on the JV team Jeremy Franklin coming over to the student section, tell him to get up. Right, big game right now, senior night. Down, down, up three, two minutes left. That Colchester foul was on number 14, Owen Grenier. That's his fourth personal. Team's 10th, so BFA in the double bonus the rest of the way. We see some of the uh, player of the game comments rolling in. Keep them coming. Let's we'll know who you think should be the Showtime player of the game as Earl. Hits the front end. Five of Noah's points today have been from the line. Five of his seven. I think he has seven, right? Yep, he does. On it. Make that eight. And puts BFA up 49-44. More importantly, makes it a two-possession game now. Listen to the crowd. Just over two minutes to go. A little handsy, but way to get over the screen. Called on number 10, Noah Earl. That's his second. You know, in a physical game, you love seeing Earl being able to fight, get over the screen, but a little bit handsy. Richard makes the first. I think I think uh, our mics are picking up Richard or Connor Leach right now. I think he's telling the boys, you know, switch the screens. Yep, just heard it again. There it is. Misses the second. That's, 
that's a coaching moment there for Coach Menard telling Noah Earl this position in the game with 154 left, with a slim lead, you don't need to force those passes yep. in. Be patient, the clock is on your side. Niamue with the ball for Colchester. Yates knocks it away. Miller able to gather in a smart, smart move by Yates. He was about to dive for it, but knew that he was not in a good position. Would have drawn a foul. Lives to fight another day. Yates. Fantastic defense. Those deflections. That's three deflections in a row. That just disrupts an offense, and the yep. refs are going to come together to discuss. BFA doing a good job of what you said, switching those screens. Yep. They're not giving Colchester uh, any, any type of space. And, and you know, doing that just doesn't allow Colchester get, to get in their offense. Absolutely. And with a minute 20 left, every second counts. Miller, a nice reverse layup. That was the prettiest shot I've seen all night, just about. 15 points for Jackson Miller. Colchester down by two, just over a minute to go. Yates down low. Leach gives up the three, gives it over to DeMar. Richard was cutting down baseline. <laughs> oh well. The log pass went pretty. Oh, that works just as well. DeMar to Earl, back to DeMar. Yambue misses. No, Earl rips down the rebound. Yates recovers. Good timeout call by Coach Menard. 34.3 seconds left. Colchester, true at BFA. 51-47. How big of a difference did that crowd make? Oh, so huge. Yeah, I mean, between Yates, DeMar, passing lanes, Earl fighting over the screens, the defense chance. I mean, it was buzzing in here. And the turning point was the first technical call. That swung all the, mo started to swing momentum over to BFA, then they got the second technical called on the coach. Uh, and from there, it really has been BFA momentum, even though it is still a tight game, Colchester is still very much in this. All it takes is a turnover in a bucket Absolutely. or a brisket. <laughs> nice. Oh, fourth. Leach. Yep, BFA. Happy to pass the ball around and burn clock. And they're doing that spectacularly. The crowd giving them the appreciation. Miller will eventually foul Leach. He's taken off the clock. Yep, that was executed so well for BFA. I gotta tell you, player of the game, I can't decide <laughs> between those three. Might have to tally. We do have two shirts here. We might just need to send a third one later. You very well could. I, I think it has to be uh, Yates, Richards, uh, and Damar. You know, as well as Richards has played, we, should, we could give it to the two seniors. Ah, uh, there you go. <laughs> you old softy. <laughs> we'll give it to the two seniors, Charlie Yates and Thomas Namar, on senior night, our co-players of the game. Wonderful. I'm seeing a lot of my mini Metro kids in the fan, in the stands. Pretty cool. Seeing both fifth and sixth grade teams here. Uh, a lot of seven, eight teams. Future Bob Whites. Fourteen point one seconds left. Leach at the line for two. BFA up 51-47 on Colchester. Ben Kaufman, excellent rider. He's gonna have a doozy tonight. <laughs> Expect minimum a thousand words. Leach makes the first. 
Well, in the age of the internet journalism, you don't have to worry about word counts. Leach goes two for two. Gives him five points. Gives BFA a six point lead with 14 seconds left. And, and Leach on the year. 10 seconds. 58% from the line. Carr gets a hand on it. Richards brings it in. And that will do it. BFA come out with the senior night win. 53-47 over Colchester. Some scoring leaders for the evening for Colchester. Jackson Miller with 15 and Zach Davis with 14. Ethan Gamlin with 8. And for the Bob Whites, Thomas DeMar and Seth Richards both with 13. Charlie Yates with 10 and Noah Earl with 8. Uh, what are some of your closing thoughts here, Landon? Well, the Bob Whites, they fought. Right? After halftime, the energy was poor. Lakers came out firing, hit some threes, and they, they continued to fight, right? It's, the heart was there, everything was there, and, you know, honestly, the technicals, they, they swung the game. Yeah. They, they really swung the game, and the crowd stayed with it, and, you know, <laughs> Coach Bushway, Coach Franklin, getting that crowd was very important because, you know, as I was saying earlier, that two to three to ten points tonight. That crowd was ten yeah. points minimum. And Colchester led by as much as eight yeah. at one point. The Bob White spot. Uh, before we say goodbye this evening, let's take a moment to thank our sponsors, Northwestern Orthopedics, Collins Pearly Sports and Fitness Center, Barrett Ford, JC Image, Corporate Outfitters, and Handy Toyota. If your business would like to be a sponsor for Northwest Access TV sports coverage this winter, please give us a call at 802-782-8676. Your final score again tonight, BFA with the senior night victory over Colchester by a score of 53-47. Thomas DeMar and Charlie Yates are co-players of the game. I'm Bryce Batchelder, and for Landon Potvin, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.